It is quite natural for China and Africa to partner, to cooperate. I think the beauty of um, our partnership is that uh, this is a partnership based on what we truly call uh, on equality, on mutual respect, uh, and uh, allowing countries to choose and policies and the strategies that suit uh, their own situation. Welcome to CCG Ambassador Dialogues. So I'm very pleased today to uh, present uh, Ambassador Tesh Mong. Uh, Chanaka, Your Excellency from Ethiopia. So, Ambassador uh, Chanaka, welcome to CCG. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wang, for hang having me for uh, this uh, Ambassador's Dialogue at the CCG. As we all know that, uh, you know, uh, China and Africa are really uh, strong uh, partners and uh, uh, we just had a forecast uh, last year, a very successful uh, China-African Cooperation Forum. And Ethiopia is the uh, one of the last largest trading partner from Africa with China. So, so what's your impression in general about uh, your your experience in China and your overview of China African China Ethiopia cooperation? Thank you, uh, Dr. Wang, again. And um, yes, I have been in Beijing for the last three years, and uh, I have been asked about my impression uh, about this country. Uh, I think. There are um, areas of civilization, culture, history, diversity, this and that, but uh, the most single impression I carry uh, with me always about China is it has transformation in the last 45 years. In the history of uh, human development, I think this country has achieved uh, a phenomenal uh, transformation in just four decades. Africa has more, again, to offer because uh, this has uh, uh, this continent has uh, untapped mm -hmm. huge natural resources. Uh, apart from uh, the population size, we have youngest population actually in the world, uh, uh, is in, in, in Africa. So I say that uh, it is quite natural for China and Africa to partner, to cooperate, to work with. No serious country can avoid China, no serious uh, country can avoid the continent of Africa. China has taken major infrastructure project in Ethiopia and that project because the way we defined it actually has been contributing not only in creating infrastructure but also in elevating poverty uh, and then of course we have investment from China, we have trade with China, we have technology transfer, we have uh, financing cooperation uh, with, uh, with China. So this is uh, a partnership benefiting both sides. Uh, when Chinese companies invest in Ethiopia, in Africa, the first thing they do is they create jobs for our uh, young people. They boost our capacity uh, and productivity. They uh, increase our uh, export. Uh, export means earning foreign currency that uh, we need. Uh, it is technology transfer uh, and uh, it is also building capacity. The cooperation uh, with China, for instance, if you take with Ethiopia, it is not only limited to industrialization, to trade, but uh, we also cooperate in digital economy, in technology transfer. The first satellite uh, for Ethiopia was launched here uh, in China uh, with uh, uh, support uh, from the government of uh, China. I think the beauty of um, our partnership, uh, Dr. Wang, again, I want to mention is that uh, this is a partnership based on what we truly call uh, on equality, on mutual respect, uh, and uh, allowing countries to choose uh, policies and the strategies that suit uh, their own situation. Outside Africa and outside China, many perceive that uh, this is uh, a partnership benefiting China. This is not correct, mm -hmm. uh, because I always argue that, uh, Dr. Wang, a partnership that does not benefit both will not sustain long. Mm -hmm. It will not stay long. Uh, I mean, Africa is a fascinating place, uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I remember when I was a child, actually, my father went to Africa, uh, worked on the Tanzania-Zambia railway. So that was in the 1970s. And I remember he came back from Africa and told me how vast, how 
you know, rich, abundant in, in natural resources uh, African are and uh, how big the, the, the continent is. So what do you think about this, um, you know, project cooperation, you know, Belt and Road, for example, and, and how we can really uh, work together to, to strengthen such a cooperation? We have defined the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway, which is part of the Belt and Road uh, Initiative, as our number one priority. Why? Because 90% uh, of Ethiopian export goes through Djibouti, and the import as well as export. Uh, so you can see how critical uh, that project is. Uh, so China financed the project and they also helped us in uh, construction of uh, uh, the railway. And at the same time, of course, uh, uh, they are managing and training Ethiopians actually to take over the management of the railway. Now it is a, a two-nation owned uh, infrastructure project. It benefits uh, both Djibouti and Ethiopia, but mm -hmm. China also benefits, Chinese companies also sure. benefited from it. Secondly, let me also take another important um, Belt and Road uh, projects like the industrial parks. Uh, these are a uh, basis for industrialization. And it made us uh, competitive uh, in terms of attracting investment because the service is one center and uh, uh, every infrastructure necessary is put in one place. Uh, so uh, you can see that it, it, it makes Ethiopia a competitive, uh, um, attractive uh, for uh, foreign direct investment. Mm -hmm. Now, we know how much digital economy is now contributing to Chinese recovery. Uh, and uh, we are just starting many, uh, not many actually, Few African countries have entered into digital economy, but it's at a very young stage. So we have a Chinese company who are willing uh, to work with us in this regard. So it is a sort of what we call win-win situation yes. uh, for both the Chinese enterprises as well as uh, for African countries. Mm -hmm. Countries like Rwanda, countries like Ethiopia, uh, and I think few other countries, uh, Tanzania, Mm -hmm. uh, all are entering into uh, digital economy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, for your information, I promoted one Ethiopian uh, coffee trading uh, brand mm -hmm. in Shanghai on oh. online. Yes. Uh, and uh, in five seconds, we sold 11,000 bags of Ethiopian coffee. Oh, in five, right? tex five, in five seconds. seconds. Five yeah. seconds, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is totally un unthinkable. Yes. In, in the past. Uh, yes. So we can see the miracle of uh, uh, e-commerce, e digital economy. Mm. Uh, and uh, we have understood, uh, I think, the importance and significance of uh, such an infrastructure. I think the opportunity is there. Uh, we have challenges here and there. But uh, again, my, um, my w thinking is that uh, you can have challenges, and in every cooperation you have a challenge. The best way is to continue and to do more cooperation, uh, mm -hmm. not less. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think both sides uh, have uh, stakes now. And you gave uh, many uh, good stories, like uh, you talk about, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a private sector also involvement. We actually know that there's a company called Hua yeah. Jian, Hua Jian, Jian, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 President John, I mean, he actually invests in yes. Africans through industrial parks. Uh, has one of the biggest shoe manufacturing there and then helps the uh, Ethiopia export. There are several private sector actually, mm -hmm. textile, mm -hmm. uh, shoe factories uh, and uh, pharmaceuticals sure, uh, who sure. are working in Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. It's a huge contribution, as I said, uh, job creation for us. Mm -hmm. uh, like that one company has created job for 8,000 Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. It's not only creating job, uh, it's supporting, you know, if you take an average family in Ethiopia is, um, has five members. And if you multiply um, 80,000 by five, it is about 40,000 uh, mm -hmm. people being supported in one uh, single project. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we need to bring in, I think, the private sector when it comes to trade, when it comes to investment, when it comes to even digital economy, mm -hmm. when it comes to pharmaceutical uh, uh, sectors. Uh, so mm -hmm. we look forward uh, to really enhanced, strengthened, and mm. vitalized, uh, revitalized uh, uh, work between Chinese public and private sector. I see uh, there's a, a lot of similarity between Africa and China. So I see that China experience and, and China path of development uh, can be transformed in, in a Africa for some extent. But of course, you, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's some criticism on that, you know, say, oh, China is doing the, the, that trap or... Yeah, so, so which, which I think is not, not, not true. 
Loan is not something that is imposed on any country. Mm -hmm. Let me say that very clearly. I can talk for uh, my own country. Mm -hmm. uh, loan is not imposed, or debt is not imposed on us. Mm -hmm. But there is a, a structural problem where debt is accumulated. Uh, so we come and ask uh, for loan ourselves. We have uh, borrowed four billion U.S. dollars for the railway project between uh, Egypt, I mean Djibouti and uh, Ethiopia, mm. and uh, it is worth an investment. We needed it, mm -hmm. so we come and ask China for a loan because, for that matter, there was no other country willing to uh, finance that project, uh, and uh, it's I think the case with most most of the countries that borrow money now, and uh, of course. The problem with the uh, debt trap concept, I don't know why mm. when it comes to loan from China that uh, it becomes a debt trap and then when it comes loan from other sources. The problem is that with some infrastructure projects, I think because of capacity problem, because mm. of, I think, technological problem, because of management problems, mm -hmm. most of the projects do not mature or uh, mm -hmm. complete in time mm -hmm. and then the debt matures. Mm -hmm. uh, and then. In order to pay the debt, you get another loan, and then uh, it, it, it ends up in what we call uh, a debt accumulation. But I think mm -hmm. the, the best way, again, is to sit down and address the critical uh, bottleneck, structural bottleneck that is facing, I think, uh, the debtor countries. And then that is exactly what we are trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, sure. to really uh, discuss and then create this perception mm -hmm. that uh, getting loan from China uh, puts African countries into debt trap, and then uh, mm, African countries should not borrow money from China. And no, I think that's not the fair approach. Mm -hmm. It's not even helpful for Africa. No. It's not no. helpful for Africa, I think. Yeah. The best way for uh, China and Africa, I think, the way forward is that uh, we are already in it. We need to sit down and discuss mm -hmm. and find a solution. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the right track uh, to go, and that is precisely what we are doing now. Now I understand there, the, you know, in Ethiopia there are some civil uh, conflicts, uh, you know, there, there are some, some uh, northern part, there are some uh, unstable situation. And, and so what, what, what has been going on probably is having the concern of Ethiopia and people outside Ethiopia. Perhaps uh, you could give a bit of a explanation of what's going on there. The conflict uh, actually started in the northern part of Ethiopia. And uh, uh, of course, there, there is background, political background to it. Uh, we had uh, differences uh, with the party that is ruling the northern part of Ethiopia called Tigray region. And then and, uh, we have the federal government. We had uh, political differences and uh, we have opted um, for dialogue to resolve political problems and uh, to give it a political solution. Unfortunately, the force uh, in northern part of Ethiopia uh, opted for uh, uh, military means uh, and uh, mm -hmm. they attacked our, uh, one of our uh, command forces. Uh, we introduced uh, uh, um, uh, law enforcement operation in that part of the country. Uh, we actually succeeded in doing, but uh, when we moved our military out of that region, then they regrouped themselves and they came and uh, attacked and extended the war to other two regions. Uh, but uh, now they are again pushed back into uh, the region. And uh, we have uh, a number of issues actually there. One is uh, the government of Ethiopia again declared a mm -hmm. humanitarian truce mm -hmm. so that uh, humanitarian assistance goes to the needy in northern part of Ethiopia unfettered, uh, unimpeded. Uh, currently, there is no ongoing uh, sort of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, conflict uh, as used to be. Uh, but um, the problem is, is that uh, forces, uh, there are some uh, two armed groups which are trying uh, to undermine the ongoing uh, process. But uh, as a government, we are trying our level best uh, so that the national uh, dialogue succeeds. And uh, then any issue under the sun is brought uh, to the table and so that we discuss. Of course, we have to set a priority, whether it is change of constitution, whether it is change of uh, governance, whether it is, uh, you know, uh, everything should be done uh, through dialogue. Uh, and we have uh, an ongoing uh, AU effort uh, we, to which Ethiopia has uh, given its support. And uh, uh, that's where we, we are in terms of uh, the political process uh, in the country. 
Of course, the economy has been hit hard by mm -hmm. both the pandemic as well as uh, mm -hmm. the conflict in the northern part of Ethiopia has affected. Uh, yes, we have uh, currently a challenge, but we hope that we will mm -hmm. overcome. Uh, we need wisdom, uh, we need uh, unity uh, of purpose. Uh, we really need uh, to uh, join hands uh, with the leadership of uh, Prime Minister Abi so that uh, we can uh, uh, enhance uh, the efforts that uh, we have uh, already launched. Particularly, we make sure that we positively contribute uh, and Im be involved in the national dialogue process. If we have limitations here and there, uh, then we just participate and try to, uh, you know, uh, make our own contribution in a very constructive way, in a very uh, future-looking way. Uh, we cannot really uh, get stuck in our past. I think we need to move forward, and uh, that's what we are trying to do. And uh, we really hope that uh, you know there, there will be more dialogue, as you said, and uh, of course there will be more consensus, and we try, try to minimize the conflict uh, uh, as much as possible, so we can really, uh, you know, see a, a peaceful. Uh, development uh, and, and also, uh, you know, continued uh, uh, prosperous development for, for Ethiopia. And, uh, and we all come to the conclusion there will be enormous opportunities, potentials and uh, uh, cooperation in between China and African countries and Ethiopia. And uh, so, so once again, thank you, uh, Ambassador, for your insights thank and you. <laughs> thank you for coming to CCG. Thank you. And we hope to see you again. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.